This is Dave McCain with Right Tree Genealogy doing another video on FTDNA. And this one is to cover T2T, telomere to telomere, of one of our haplo groups in our Lineage 1 of our Barton project. During the Ed Men's conference, there's a discussion between the fellow geneticist at Family Tree DNA and our lead administrator for our project. And during that discussion, there was a belief that the T2T could actually help us break up a group of our testers. We have nine that are stuck at a certain terminal SNP, and yet we feel or believe that there's a separation that should occur. They reviewed the nine testers plus some additional in the project around them to see if there was a specific or unique SNP that could be called and defined with the T2T process. I'm going to show that to you now. Three members that have the FTT160. That is now defined in the project and it is a telomere to telomere or the T right here for Ancestry. When they put this T in it, that's one of them that they defined and will show up in the IZOG browser under the T2T testing for Family Tree DNA. So this will show up there. Now that I'm showing you this, I want to show you what it looked like from our perspective, the project's perspective, what it looked like, we take the DNA and we put it into a table ourselves and we place these testers. I'm going to put myself completely away. Now over here you will see that this is the way it was uh, prior to the testing. BY27457, believed to be around 1745 CE, we had these testers, we had this many different people underneath the BY27457. There is a group right here, 2, 3, and 4. Now to FTDNA's block tree, there were 9 total. But for us, we broke them up based on the FTDNA STRs that appeared. Then over here on this one, it got with that new test FTT16 it is defined as being around 1794 notice this right here the FTY814 and the FTY814 this is the group of individuals the three here have actually been separated the now FT, FTT160 however we had already defined them because they had this unique STR in the FTDNA big Y so you saw them on this table here. The other individuals that used to match with them was this group here. There's one, two, three, four, five, six that still appear with the BY27457 and then the other three individuals separated out with FTT160. Now I'm gonna go over into the Discover Haplo report. So now that I am in the Discover uh, tool and look at how this falls into play, it shows these individuals that fall underneath of this and we go into scientific data and it says it's about 1795 when that was formed okay and the variant now I'm going to give you a piece of information here because I actually found this I have additional clue for you it shows FTT 160 it says not applicable at this time it, ancestrally, it was a C, and it's derived to a T. So as you can see, it gave us, the T2T gave us a new SNP, and it doesn't show that it's been defined yet. However, I have a little additional information here that I want to bring up. So I did some additional analysis to say, what could the possibility be that I can find where this SNP is in the actual block tree data. So the additional analysis I did on this was to see they actually have a couple of their SNPs defined on the IZOG website. And let's go over there and see that now. Okay, so I've gone to the, the IZOG wiki page. There is a YDNA click button here over to the side for portals. I click on the portals page, it says general. I click on the FTDNA SNP index. And when I did this, I found some information here. 
you can go down through this and then you'll run across right here in this spot right here you'll see that there are a couple of them that actually cross over into the position on HG38. Well, I took that information from this page and went, can I take a look at the data and come up with a way to find where, using these two as reference, figure out if I can find out where it could possibly be on the, the 38 uh, on FTDNA's regular website. So when I did that, I took the reference number and said, okay, the FTT44 is T2T1 uh, is this number. The HG38 is this number. What's the difference? And then I took a look at the FTT45 did the same thing. Basically, 220,035 plus or minus a few uh, numbers. So I said, okay, knowing that this is a smaller number, I took and created 220016 or 220,016. And then I looked at the high end of this one. When I looked at this, I said, here's my limits. These are where they could possibly be in the database. I went into one of those matches on our table that had the FTT 160. So what I did is I went over here and I looked at my two control limits that I created. I took the first one, I put the first one into the file here and hit search. And it says no results found. I said, well, okay, then it's tighter than this on me. So I took the upper control number again, knowing that the numbers could range from this to this. I then took the high number, put it into the database, hit search, and lo and behold, I found a group of T's. Where is this at? Right here. Position 11551176 went from a C to a T. I said, that's interesting. So I did this exact same thing on the other testers, the three that have the FTT 160. I then did the same thing with the rest of the BY27457s and noticed that they didn't have that information. So now it's time for the Paul Harvey moment. The information that I researched and found and looked at those testers still didn't conclude that I was correct. Since I had received the message directly from the phylogeneticist as a copy from the ad main admin of our project, I felt that I could go ahead and relay that question back to him. And this is his response. You are seeing a message from the phylogeneticist at, at Family Tree DNA. I've blocked off the information that is private for our project and related to the fact of his email and everything. This was a specifically that he had addressed a question or answer to our project. And so I followed up with this question. And his direct answer to my findings is as follows. Yes, that is correct. So in a future update uh, on IZOG, you should see FTT160 mapped to the actual location on the HG3811551176. So as those of us that are admins that can look at this data deeper and find things, there are times, it doesn't mean every time it'll work. But there are times that since we, being in a project, we are able to see additional data and help researchers. As a genetic genealogist project admin, we can find things that are going to be available for people to review in the future. If you like this kind of content, please consider subscribing right here or watching some of this other content. Let's continue learning together.